I am super excited. I uh, saw this morning, I uh, got an email from Ableton that they released uh, the next beta version of Live 12.1, 12.1 beta 13. And I noticed down at the bottom here, tucked uh, uh, right here to where most people wouldn't notice, fixed an issue where the send values of audio MIDI and group tracks imported from the browser would be reset. Now, uh, if you follow my workflow that I've taught for many, many years, follow the playback method, uh, the beauty of this is we can program a song once, we can route our tracks to our outputs, and then we can just build a set instantly, as opposed to the really slow process, which is creating a separate output for, let's say, 11 uh, electric guitar parts. And then when we build our set, we drag our electric guitar clips in and we've got to think, which guitar part is this? All we literally do is we just program songs and we drag them into sets. Now, the problem previously was that uh, when I would drag a song into my set like this, uh, all that routing that I did with the sins would not transfer over to return track. So it would basically zero out, go back to nominal. Um, I did not want that, right? And when customers and students would write in, we'd say, hey, it's actually a bug. Uh, I reported it in the private beta of Live uh, 12 back before it was even announced, back before it was public beta uh, and it never got fixed. We had students write in, I've just been using Live 11.3, but the cool thing about this now is if I jump over to our song, and I'll show you here, uh, let's jump into our song. Let me actually show you our send so you can see this. Uh, you will be really excited to know that the sends routing now carries over, right? So that trick of just being able to drag a song in, not have to think about your routing, have multiple outputs, uh, change your multiple outputs to be whatever output on your interface you need them to be based on your context. That is restored as of live beta, uh, live 12.1 beta 13. Now, quick note on this. While I'm excited about this being fixed, it's important to know I never ever ever would use beta software on stage. And that's not because I don't trust Ableton. Uh, it's not because I don't trust their developers or I'm expecting there to be bugs, but it's because it's beta software. It has not been tested and they have not given the seal of approval to use on stage yet. What I would do is I would upgrade a, a non-mission critical machine and start testing on that. And then once they finally put it into the RC, the release candidate, They'll test that and then it'll eventually be released. So I'm hoping this is a couple of weeks. I'm hoping at the most, maybe a month. Uh, but I would again, encourage you, highly encourage you to download and start testing now. Now, if you wanna walk through of the best way to test uh, securely and to upgrade securely, uh, I've got a little podcast that I created that walks you through that, plus a full course for all access members. Uh, that shows you how to actually upgrade your OS and how to make this a, a really smooth process. So if you want to check those out below, you can. Uh, and if you want to purchase Ableton and support this channel, you can click the link below to upgrade to Live 12 because we're almost there and we're almost ready. But Ableton, thanks for fixing that bug. I'm super excited to see that come back. And that means we can get back to building lightning fast Ableton sets in Ableton Live 12 and not just Ableton Live 11.3. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Take care.